are y'all playing songs from the the era that that was going on with ministry? We're doing only Kiss songs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey Creeps, we're here with Sin Karen, who is the guitar player for Ministry, among other bands. But um, Ministry right now is touring. Yeah, we're, um, should, I, should I hold this or do you want to hold this? I don't don't hold it. I'll hold it. Um, yeah, we're actually out on the road right now doing uh, a Vans uh, Wax Tracks Records uh, tour um, to celebrate. Uh, there's a documentary on um, the early Wax Tracks Records, which is a label that, that uh, Ministry and um, Thousand Homo DJs, Palehead, other Al Jorgensen projects were a part of, and uh, they just released a documentary, and so we're uh, touring the country. We're only doing six shows, and uh, we're right smack in the middle of it right now. Do you know, what's the name of the documentary? Uh, it's just, oh, it's called Industrial Accident. Ah. Yeah, I should know that. I read Al's book, so I remember reading stories about the <laughs> Wax Tracks record days. Are y'all playing songs from the, the era that that was going on with ministry we're doing only kiss songs <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. no yeah we're, we're doing all early uh wax tracks era material ministry. yeah there's no we're not doing anything past i want to say like uh the early 90s wow yeah so that's a throwback every it show is. you're doing it like that Every show is, uh, we're doing the same set list, um, and we're throwing in some uh, old revolting cocks. We're throwing in some uh, Thousand Homo DJs. Are you throwing in any of the stage antics that used to happen and go down with revolting cocks? Uh, unfortunately, no. Not on stage, just backstage. Uh, also, I really enjoy that I got to say revolting cocks into this microphone <laughs> right now. That was the first and of the last. Really? Uh, no. I mean... Let's be honest. I'm sure you. It's not the first. No, exactly. I'm, glad. <laughs> I'm glad that you know these bands. I don't. I sometimes I meet people when I do interviews, and they have like no. They're like, "What? You're in the revolving something? <laughs> the and revolving like, doors? Yeah, I've gotten that. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. Lords of Arabia. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So I met Sin because he's also a guitar player for Lords of Acid, and is an amazing. Like your stage presence is above and beyond. You must have been told this before. Am I, I'm not the first person to come up to you and say, "Dude, on stage you own the entire stage." That is the first time. I've yeah. Heard well, that. congratulations. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate that. that. That actually means a lot. We had a lot of fun at that show. It was a great show. I was yeah. dressed like a devil. He passed me a pick with his tongue. It was. <laughs> It's all done with smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not even my tongue. It's a prosthetic. Yeah. That's what they said about tongue. Gene. Yeah, yeah. It was a cat. Mm -mm. Well, okay. <laughs> I reached you from like, you were in the back of the venue. Yeah. And I still got you with you my tongue. You summoned me. I did. <laughs> I appeared right up front. I did, yeah. Uh, we don't need to go into that anymore. Do you okay. still have the pick? I do. Where is it? I had two. How did I get two? I don't remember how I got two. You probably don't even have them. Oh, you threw one at me, and then I got one from your mouth. And I have them both. They're on my dresser. No, I only have one because I gave one to that other girl. Sorry, now we're going. See, now Sorry. look at this bunny trail. We could have been talking about this over there when we're sitting over exactly. there. All right. So what I was going to ask you, um, you joined ministry in 2006. Correct. I actually joined the Revolting Cox in 2006. Mm. I was the uh, touring guitar player, mm -hmm. and it was uh, the Revolting Cox opening for Ministry on that tour, which was called the Master Bay Tour. And um, right after that tour, I joined Ministry, so it was still 2006, and uh, I uh, helped Al co-write uh, the Last Sucker album. Uh -huh. And that was in late 2006, so. Is that one that was up for the Grammy, or is it the one after? No, it was, um, the first Grammy nomination I got with the band was for our cover-up album. Okay. And uh, that was for Best Metal Performance. And then a year later, uh, we released a live album, mm -hmm. and we once again got nominated for Best Metal Performance. When you get nominated does your manager call you to tell you or how do you find out do you kind of know it's maybe going to happen that you're being considered um our engineer actually called me huh. and i was driving 
I was in El Paso at the time and I was driving and my engineer called me and he says, hey man, um, are you sitting down? And I was like, actually I am. I go, Did you just I'm look down? Like, I'm doing 55, but I am sitting down. Yeah. And uh, and he says, you just got nominated for a Grammy and I almost fucking crashed the car. I couldn't oh fucking believe it. And uh, so yeah, both times I got, uh, I got a call from our engineer. So it's pretty amazing. I never in a million years thought, you know, I'd be nominated for a Grammy. The band has been nominated six times and we're 0 for 6. Who, who do you remember who got it when you were up? Yeah, um, Metallica the first year and Judas Priest the second. Well, those aren't bad ones, you know. Do you remember that time that um, Jethro, Tull? Jethro Tull took it? Of course it? I do, yeah. That was fucking, what yeah. was that about? I'm surprised they didn't beat us the last time. I mean, they play a flute or something. <laughs> a skin flute. <laughs> <laughs> like you you're fun why because i said skin flute yeah skin flute glory hole masturbators yeah. revolting cocks yeah, we're up to I'm four really, i'm digging this lit up glory yeah. hole it's i don't a, know it's a ring light but if you want to say glory oh, okay. hole I, I call it i prefer to call it glory hole no, from old, now on I'm old school <laughs> from now on that's the name i'll be like boys did you pack the glory hole yeah and that sounds great for me to say with yeah, a crew full of men thank you for it. that it's a good gift from you to me you got it <laughs> so this is for Horror Web. We're all about horror. I was wondering, um, are you a fan of horror? Uh, I am. I'm not a real big fan. I, I don't watch that many movies, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Right. Um, I like horror movies, but again, I just don't watch that. You're many not like a, a super horror buff or anything? No. 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 Mm -mm. Do you remember the first horror movie you saw? Um, Ish. Would The Exorcist be yes. considered? Yeah. To me, that's like my favorite yeah, that's uh, one. That one's very scary, actually. Yeah, and I mean, I, I saw it when it came out. So, yeah. you know, I in the was, theater. I, yeah, in the theater. You did? Yeah. They had yeah. that campaign, like, they weren't going to let pregnant women in or whatever because you might miscarry your child because it's so scary. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. I, I just remember it, what, it came out in the 70s, right? Yeah. Like Mid 70s or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I remember going to see it with my cousins, and uh, yeah, I remember it being pretty fucking freaky. Do you have nightmares? Shit. No. It gave me nightmares. Really? See, yeah. I. Mean, I don't know what it is with me. I, I have I have a problem really kind of losing myself in a movie. Mm. Like I, I I'm always watching something and I'm like, well that's fake. Or <laughs> like, I, I have and I wish I didn't uh, look at it like that. Uh -huh. I wish I could really get into things, but yeah, I never have like you know nightmares or you know I can't sleep because I saw this. Or you can't like fully that. buy into the fantasy. No, I can't. What can you do? You lose yourself in the process of writing music. In music, I do. And that's. That's the avenue for you. Yes. In music, uh, I'm in a completely different world. Like, if I'm writing something, I'm somewhere else. And when I'm listening to music, to me, like, that's the most beautiful thing is listening to music. And um, it can go both ways for me. There are times where I'm listening to something and I dissect it. Mm. And it lets me, it doesn't let me enjoy it mm. because I'm listening to the fucking hi-hat and I'm listening to the fucking you know what the rhythm guitar player is doing as, as opposed to the lead guitar player mm -hmm. and what the bass drum is doing right. like I focus on that shit and so it, it ruins it for me mm -hmm. but then there are other times where I sort of talk myself out of that yeah. and I let myself listen to it as a whole, a whole. yeah and so then nice. it's I mean it, it, it'll take me to you know where I was where I first heard that song That's beautiful. or that memory of of you know a, a different time a different place and uh, to me that's I mean it's so beautiful you know to listen to that have you seen the videos like online they use music for therapy for a variety of things but with patients with dementia where they'll I play have, music from their I era have, yeah yeah Isn't that I, beautiful? yeah it's amazing I mean the, the 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 just how powerful music is and how I think it reaches and it touches mm. people. You know, I don't think um, uh, people really um, give it the credit. Right. You know what I mean? That that uh, that it deserves because I think it, it's such a universal thing and it's such a powerful thing. You know, and when I see those videos, I mean, and they they're playing for people that uh, you know takes them back to mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a trip. You yeah. see their face change. Yeah, completely. Yeah. S you earlier we were chatting and you mentioned you were very young when you you knew basically right that you wanted to yeah. get into music you were six i was six years old um and it was my older cousin brought over kiss alive mm. and um it was late 75 uh -huh. and he brought it over and um i remember looking at it and i was like are they superheroes 
and he's like, no, they're a band, you know, and, and he like put the record on and from the time that needle dropped on that first song, which was a song called Deuce, mm. my life completely just turned upside down. And I remember telling him, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And every time there was a solo, uh, which was Ace Fraley, I was like, what's that? Who's that? And he's like, oh, that's Ace. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, wow. And like, no joke, I, I just had blinders on from that point on. And um, that was my goal and that was i knew that that's that's what i was gonna do when did you start playing uh like a week ago <laughs> you've, you've come very far in yeah. a week Jeez. quick learner <laughs> no, I, I started playing the guitar when i was 10. oh wow yeah i wanted to pl i wanted to start earlier but we didn't really have you know really didn't have the resources for, yeah. for stuff and uh so when i uh, finally got a guitar i was about 10 and i took basic guitar lessons and um, you know, I, I learned how to read and, and stuff like that. And uh, and he was my teacher back then. Was taught very basic guitar, taught very basic piano. And uh, every week, I would have like my lesson for the mm -hmm. week. But then he would encourage me to just do stuff on my own. And about eight months after I started, I was teaching myself how to play like Hendrix songs. Oh, wow. And so I remember my last lesson. I showed up, and he's like, "Oh, what'd you do this week?" And I started playing Purple Haze. And he was like, okay, we're pretty much done here. Like, uh, I was like, I can't really teach anymore. Uh -huh. And so I stopped with him. And um, and then I was just kind of on my own from that point on. A prodigy, so to speak. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I never, I do not consider myself a prodigy at all because I had to really work you, at it. Like, it was, you know, nowadays you see fucking kids like on YouTube, YouTube fucking shit, tutorials. And mm -hmm. like fucking kids are like five years old and uh -huh. they're already like shredding on my guitar. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, that's. You know, that was not me. No. You know, I, I really had to work at it, you know. Um, you so had to listen to the record over and over and I over did. and over. Yeah, I did. And, um, you know, there was day, no rewind button. No, not at all. Not at all. And, um, you know, I mean, I think there are prodigies out there. Sure. It's just completely natural. I mean, I've, I, I've always felt music. Um, so I think I have it. It's in my blood. My dad was a singer ah. in Mexico in the 60s, and I think that's where I got it from. Um, but you know, as far as it coming completely, it didn't. It it I, it took some work. I like to hear that you worked at it. It wasn't just yeah. like, oh, I was just blessed with this. Look at me now. Here no, I am. No. no, clearly I'm not blessed with anything. Oh, so I had to work with you're that. blessed with the fountain of youth. I know how old you are. <laughs> now, not bad for 64. Right? Not bad for 75. Yeah. Uh, someone please get the walker by the door <laughs> yes, for when the. Yes. <laughs> What you guys don't know is that we're sitting because I have a bad back. So do I. Yeah, so okay. there's my age. Um, when you got, so how did you start playing with Revolting Cox first? How did that whole gig happen? Um, I met Al at a Turkish bathhouse. Is this for real? Because <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. I, read, I told you I read the book. I would no, totally believe. No, it was, um, it was a combination of uh, an old booking agent mm -hmm. that my old band had mm -hmm. um, that knew Al and one of our old bass players who also knew Al. So it was a combination of both of these people telling him, hey, you know, if you ever need a guitar player, you should hire this guy, Sin. Uh -huh. And so they're the ones that kind of made the introduction. Uh -huh. And that's and that was in, I mean, because I joined him in 2006, that was in like 2003 or 2004. Oh. So it took a couple of years, you know, um, after we met each other for him to actually call me and need me. And so. you were you were a fan of ministry in the 90s or late 80s, 90s? Uh, I mean, I've been a fan for about, I don't know, maybe two months now. <laughs> and, uh, you just learned the songs. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I was a fan. I was a ministry, <laughs> I was a ministry Revolt and Cox fan from the 80s. Yeah. I was in high school. I remember being in my first, like, kind of high school bands mm -hmm. and uh, driving to, like, our rehearsals, and I'd be listening to, ministry cassettes and yeah i'd be like man we gotta sound like this like uh, this is the fucking it was like when i first heard them it was not like nothing i'd ever heard. yeah it was like it was something that came out from outer space that like, was just what totally is different. This? yeah because they made i mean at the time they were mixing like punk and alternative and fucking you know a little metal and you know the electronics mm. and i mean it was like nothing that that i had heard so it really intrigued me and um yeah so i was a fan back then so being a fan and then being in the band eventually, what kind of what kind of head trip is that? It's still, you know, it still fucks with my head sometimes. <laughs> There'll be times where I'm on stage and I'll look over, you know, and I'll, I, there's Al. Uh -huh. 
and we're singing like he's you know we're doing some old ministry shit and i almost get lost just kind of looking at him going i'm fucking playing in ministry <laughs> like it's still weird to me you know um there i still have those moments uh quite a bit and then sometimes in the studio you know because i i co-write a lot of the music uh with al um we'll be sitting there and you know he'll turn to me and he, he'll be like well what do you think we should do here mm. and i'm like what are you asking me, man? I'm some jackass from fucking uh, Burbank that, like, you know, you're Al Jorgensen. Uh, and, and so I still have those those moments where yeah. it's still, I'm still a fan and and uh, I don't, I don't know, I hope I, I honestly, I hope I never lose that because I still want to be on the other side of it. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's still fresh and new to me and it's still exciting and it's still trippy. Fun. Yeah. So you and him mostly write for these, the albums? That you've been on yes for the past 13 years either with ministry or the revolting cox with the we did two revolting cox records and and i wrote uh about 75 percent of the music on those revolting huh. cox albums and um he does the lyrics he does he always does all the lyrics and um and he does some of the music as well sometimes but um with ministry it's kind of a combination between you know the two of us but uh he and i have been the main guys we've had other writers and stuff as uh, well but the nucleus is is, yeah. is us yeah do you play lead guitar mostly mostly yeah with uh the other guitar player caesar came in after mike scotia rest in peace passed away um we brought caesar in and um we sort of split up the lead thing i mean I, it's probably like a 60 40 mm -hmm. right now because I, I i mean we like caesar to play lead as well but yeah i mean i play a little a little more of the leads let me ask you so how long have you been a playing musician with bands um i mean perfect making money at it since i was about 18 19. and first record deal came at around what age uh late 20s i was like 29. so you've been doing this a while yeah well 50 years now you've navigated these waters <laughs> yeah and i don't swim <laughs> <laughs> what's the advice you have for people that i mean i know the record industry everything's different now completely Do, is there like a couple pieces of advice that you could give like people that are in it right now that are trying to like be, you know become a touring musician maybe um you know the advice that, that i give people now is use all the resources that are available now we didn't have those resources back then when 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 i was starting um there was no internet there was mm -hmm. you know none of that we were flyering mm -hmm. on the sunset strip like literally fucking going to whatever place the xerox copies of shit and like that's how we spread the word mm -hmm. now you could be at home somewhere and have fans all over the world yeah. you know so in that sense, I mean, the internet has helped. It's hurt the mm -hmm. business a ton. Um, so, you know, that's a whole other thing on how that has fucked shit up for us as well. But advice-wise, use those resources as much as you can. Do as much, um, learn as much about the business side of it as possible. Um, and, you know, uh, try to, try if it's something that you love, do it. I mean, if people are, are telling you, you know, you can't do it and blah, 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 that's all I heard. All the negativity. Yeah, and I still did it because it was something that I that I felt in my heart. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're in it for other reasons, it may not pan out for you, but ultimately I think if you're doing whatever it is that you're, that you're doing, you know, if it's something that, that you truly feel in your heart, do it and, and give a thousand percent and go after shit. Don't wait for the phone to ring. Um, I always made shit happen for myself. If I was going through a period where I didn't have stuff coming up, I fucking picked up the phone or I reached out to somebody. Um, I've never been one to sit and wait for shit to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I've always made shit happen for myself. And I think there's a lot of people that, you know, are always like, I have friends that are like, oh man, you know, you're so lucky you're doing this and you're doing that. And how come that shit never happens Ooh, to me? Lucky. And, like, and I'm like, you motherfuckers, man, I've been fucking working. Like what I'm doing now is stuff that I've been working on for the past year or two. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm like, I'm looking a year or two out, right. you know, to make stuff happen. So don't fucking sit on your ass, you know, and expect 
and don't call it lucky fall. yeah i mean listen luck is it's it's a part of it i'm not gonna say it's not i'm i'm you know clearly i have been in places at the right time sure um but it is a thousand percent hustle for me yeah um constantly it's a 24 7 thing i don't when you're doing this on this side of it you're always on and like your phone always has to be on and you always have to fucking you know be making those connections and stuff like that so it's a lot of work it's a lot of hustle and it's um it's a lot of sacrifice that i don't think a lot of people realize Mm -hmm. um a lot of things suffer when you do this uh relationships family all that stuff i can't make plans like you know like so-and-so's wedding is coming up in three or four months and I don't know if I want to be in town. Like it, all those things. That sounds hard. like a blessing. And it, well, they're and they're hard on the people around you. Just the wedding bit, you know, because they don't necessarily understand. Yeah. What it, how it is and what it's like for us and stuff. So a lot of those things suffer. So you've got to be like willing mm. and want this so bad that you kind of have to let those things, you know. Do you feel like you have to do this though? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was the quickest answer I've ever had in my damn Absolutely. life. It's honestly, it, it's like breathing. Wow. To me, honestly. Well, then you're doing the right thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to do music is something, like I said, that I have in my blood. And, and I will, I'll be doing it up here or down here till the day I die. Um, you know, whether we're playing fucking huge festivals or i'll be in some fucking corner bar mm-hmm. with an acoustic guitar it doesn't matter like to me it's, they have a lobby um, down here i know i'll be down there later <laughs> um make sure you tip your waiters and waitresses and um yeah i'll always be doing it you know to some capacity you know i might not be touring you know in a few years or whatever but i'm always going to be creating and writing music and, and doing it to some capacity do you uh like performing or writing better or is it kind of Two that's, totally that's, different things. Can't even compare that. No, yeah. uh, two totally different things. Both with equal highs. The the high that I get from writing and creating is, I mean, it's 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 just as much of a high as standing in front of half a million people playing. Wow. It is. It's that intense. Um, when I'm at home and I'm writing, um, I can't even like. It's hard to even describe the feeling of sitting at my desk with all my you know instruments and stuff and knowing that i don't have anything written Mm -hmm. but the excitement of knowing that in a couple of hours i will have created something like some blueprint of something that was that will turn into a song that will you know it it, that high is what keeps me going Uh and it's very addicting wow um and we get that high from performing performing it's like it's completely different high, uh-huh. um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, they're equal, but they're different, you know? Does the performing high take longer to come down from? Yes. Ah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's really weird because um, when you're on tour, all you hear, well, mostly, is how amazing you are, uh-huh. right? And everyone is telling you just, you're the fucking greatest so Everybody in the world. loves you that's coming to see yeah. you. Right? And so... I mean, just imagine what like what that does to someone's head, right? So imagine you're out on the road, and every day you're hearing thousands of people tell you how amazing you are, right? And then you go home, and everything stops, <laughs> right? And you don't hear shit, and you're like taking out the garbage, and you're just like <laughs> you're just a dude again. Yeah, yeah, and you're just like holy fuck, like I, you know, like just uh, nothing and um so to go from that Uh to that Uh the first couple of tours fucked with my head Mm. and um and you know i never believe the hype and i i don't like i've never gotten to that point where you know uh, i've let the ego get out of control or anything like that but when you're hearing stuff like that every day right it's just weird to go from that to nothing you get little endorphin you know? rushes yeah absolutely and so when you when you perform like we'll do a show like last night did a show it takes me close to 24 hours holy shit to fully come down from that so you i don't even know how you sleep a fucking I vampire <laughs> i slept like three four hours last some night, kind so. of vampire yeah but yeah that was a very good question because that that is something that's a very real thing wow. to come down from that that seems like it I, I i can't imagine like being up there and getting all of that energy 
thrown at you it and is, not filtering it out. So it's. I mean, the 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 biggest crowd we've ever played in front of was in Poland at the Woods, Poland Woodstock Festival in mm-hmm. 2012. That we were just shy of 500,000 people, mm-hmm. and I mean, imagine what that energy is like. When you walk out on stage and you hear that roar no. of half a million people, and wow. it was just amazing, you know. So, to come down from that, oh my god, it takes a while, you know. As opposed to when you're writing, that high is there. So, like, say I'll finish a writing session at home, right? And I just wrote this new song or whatever. I can I can go to sleep and I'm cool, and it's still in my in my head, but I'm not up here from that rush of you know hearing. All those people screaming your name and you know. It seems like it's almost nicer. Like it's a nice ride. It is. It's smoother. Yeah. It's smoother. The on tour thing is like you go way the fuck up. Oh my adrenaline just, and yeah. endorphins. And yeah. then the other one's probably just endorphins. Yeah. yeah. I know science in. There you go. I know yeah. about biology. And sign, and sign language. What was it? And sign language. <laughs> Diarrhea. <laughs> I learned something new today. Wait, is that like that? No? Yes. Cool. I'm going to do that all the time now. Just, you know, to all the boys in the band. It's my <laughs> yeah. gift to you. I'll teach you some others. Cool. Awesome. We really appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. This is Thank you. this is our cool moment. This is my cool moment where I'm like, oh fuck, I'm talking to Sin from Goddamn Ministry right now. So I had now I get a moment. And I'm gonna have stories for people. Oh, you're much too kind. Oh, I don't think so. But you know, you don't know me that well. <laughs> <laughs> Ask these motherfuckers behind the camera. They'll She's say evil. shaking their heads. <laughs> What'd you say? Evil. Hush. <laughs> okay. Nice. In the comments, let us know maybe what your favorite ministry song is or tell us about the time you saw ministry because I know you motherfuckers have. And um, I guess that's it. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, no. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> that's the thing. You're going to have a bunch of these comments. <laughs> I'm going to tell all my deaf friends to look. You know, yeah. Watch this interview. We'll close caption it until the very end. And yes. then, then there's a special message from Sin. Yeah. To, to all you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you so very, 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 very much. We really appreciate it. We hope you have a great show tomorrow. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I hope to be a part of it in the future next time I come back. Oh, please. Um, yeah, because I tend to frequent, you know, Austin. these parts. Yeah. We'll go have tacos. For sure, definitely. A taco, what was it? Taco truck or something? Yeah, taqueria. Yeah, taco, yeah. Taco so, truck. thank you guys for having me, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, thank you yeah. so much. Uh, Until next time, I'm Scara, and we'll see you in your screens.